Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and if you are up to date on this channel, you know that the last bunch of videos that I posted were in the Swift UI Advanced Learning Playlist. They were really advanced, complex topics. Some of those videos got really long and really difficult. So I think it's a good time now to maybe switch gears and maybe take a break from the hard stuff and look at some of the easier things that I have not yet covered on this channel. So the next couple of videos are gonna be things that are either new to iOS and iOS 17, or things that I just haven't covered yet. A lot of these things are not really core and foundational to building SwiftUI apps. So I'm gonna to try to move a little quickly here and keep these videos shorter, maybe like 10 to 15 minute mark, something in there. This first video, we're gonna discuss a new modifier that I have very rarely used on this channel, which is the popover. This is a great way to literally show something on top of the current content on the screen and literally have it pop over your current content. So this is great for maybe things like little tips and info boxes, maybe some popover menus and things like that. We're gonna look at all the different ways that we can use the popover modifier, and then we're gonna discuss a couple different implementations. Welcome back, everybody. We are back here again in the Swift UI Bootcamp playlist. This is the original playlist on this channel. And I'm just going to add a couple more videos here again because Swift UI just keeps getting better and we keep getting more and more really cool features. Uh, this feature included, I wish we had in the original version of Swift UI, but I am thankful and happy that we have it at least now. So, what we're going to cover is called a popover. And before we begin, I just want to throw out there that earlier in this series, we did a, what I called a popover bootcamp. And in that video, we used sheets and made our own custom popovers. But going forward, if we refer to something as a popover, I guess we should use the native Swift UI version of the popover. So you can call these modal transitions or sheets that we discussed earlier. What we're going to do in this video is what I will actually call a popover going forward. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view and let's call this native popover bootcamp. Let's click create. Let's jump inside and I'm just going to close the navigator quick and make the text a little bigger so that you guys can see it. And this should be a really easy one because a lot of the code is very, very similar to a lot of the other Swift UI modifiers that we've already learned. So let's start this one with a super simple screen. I'm going to make a Z stack here. And on the background, let's do color.gray.ignore safe area. And then above that, I'm just gonna put a quick button. And the button will say something simple and let's click enter on the action. And the modifier we're gonna look at in this video is actually called popover. There are two completions here. This one is binding to an identifiable and this one is binding to an is presented. This works basically the same way as sheet or full screen cover where we, we can bind to an item or bind to is presented. Same thing as full screen cover, right? We're just going to use popover now. So the, the code should be very, very familiar to you guys. We're going to use the is presented because it's a little easier to use for this tutorial. We're going to bind to a Boolean. So let's create an at state. Private var. Let's call it show popover of type bool. Set it equal to false. And then of course we need to bind to it with the dollar sign show popover. Let's click enter on the content and we're going to keep the content super simple for now. Let's just put a quick text here that says maybe hello subscribers. And this will be a quick friendly reminder that if you are watching this playlist and you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I think a large portion of you are not subscribing, but watching the videos and as amazing that is really does help me out if you could just hit that button. But whether or not you're going to click that subscribe button, you're definitely going to click this button here. So in this button, we should put a little action that says show pop over and maybe dot toggle. All right, if I click this, let's see what happens. And boom, we have a sheet pop up. Now you're probably wondering, hey, Nick, we said we're going to look at popovers, but this looks like a sheet and we've already covered sheets in this playlist. And you're absolutely correct. And I was super confused about this the first time I did it as well. Why does a popover look like a sheet? Well, it turns out there's another modifier that we need to use here. And it's called dot presentation compact adaptation. And let's type in here. And there's two completions here. This one allows you to customize the presentation for 
horizontally or vertically compact size classes. So if you're using like a larger or smaller device that's horizontal or vertical, you can customize the adaptation. But in this video, we're just going to use the simple compact adaptation just for a universal adaptation for all devices. I think it's probably much more common um, unless you're really customizing your app for different device sizes. If I click the period here, we're going to see there's a couple completions and it turns out that sheet is one of the adaptations that we can use. Same with full screen cover. And then of course we have our new one, which is popover. So let's click dot sheet here, just cause we already saw what the sheet looks like. When I do that, we're gonna get a quick error message. Of course, presentation compact adaptation is only available in iOS 16.4 or newer. I'm not gonna deal with versioning in this video. So let's just go ahead and change our project, go to the navigator and make our project compile for iOS 16.4. If you don't have 16.4 here, you're probably using an older version of Xcode. So go ahead and update your Xcode to a newer version that supports 16.4. Let's jump back into our code and let's look at what the sheet looks like. Click me. This is our typical sheet. We can also do full screen cover. And then we can also do the new popover. Now, this is basically what we're really focused on in this video. This is a cool little popover that occurs right on the view where we put the modifier and this is important so when we use the the sheet right that sheet is coming up from basically anywhere on this screen that sheet's going to come up from the bottom right if we put this code down here on the entire z stack the sheet's going to look the exact same but when we use popover that popover is going to appear right on top of the view that it is drawn on so right now, this popover is on this entire Z stack. We know the Z stack is full screen because it's the entire gray area. So if I click it, you're probably going to wonder where on earth is the popover happening, right? It clicks it, but you can't really tell. If you look really closely up here, I'll try to zoom in here. There's a little shadow that appears in this top corner. It's really hard to see, but basically this popover right now is appearing the anchor for the popover is in the top left corner of the entire Z stack. And so obviously that's not a great look, but all we need to know is this popover is going to appear on the view that we're putting it on. So if I move it and I put it on the button here, then it's going to appear right on top of the button, which is exactly what we want here. Before we move forward, I do just want to throw out here that this very well may be the way that we start showing actual sheets and full screen covers in Swift UI. So right now, if I use the dot sheet modifier or the full screen cover modifier, that's going to do more or less the exact same thing as a popover with the sheet adaptation. And my guess is this is probably Apple subtly hinting to us that this is the direction that this framework might go. And honestly, in the long run, it's probably going to be better because now we can customize which of those presentations we want just by changing this little enum here, right? So now I don't need to add a sheet and a full screen cover and a popover modifier. I can just add this one popover and then just change what adaptation that I want here. So it kind of is going to open us up to basically being able to customize all of that much easier than we currently have. Apple has not officially said that, but that's just my guess. Like otherwise I'm not really sure why they would put sheets inside this adaptation here. We're probably going to start using popover more and more going forward. Anyway, let's look again at the dot popover, what we're really focused on in this video. So the rest of this video is just going to be playing around with the popover and maybe some of the different ways we can actually implement this. Now, if I hold the option button and click on the popover modifier, we can read a little bit of the documentation here. And you're going to notice that in the complete function, there is an attachment anchor as well as an arrow edge. And I'm going to come down here and read the attachment anchor is the positioning anchor that defines the attachment point of the popover. So this is basically on the button. Where is the popover going to appear on top of? And then we have arrow edge. And if I read this, it says the attachment anchor that defines the location in Mac OS. So if we are not building for Mac OS, which we are not right now, the arrow edge is not going to do anything. So we're just going to play around with the attachment anchor real quick. So 
let's go ahead and call dot pop over again. This time I'll hold the option button and click enter so we can get the actual completion here. Let's bind to show pop over. And then for the attachment anchor, I'm going to press the period and we can look at either a point or a rect. A rect would be, we're going to tell it the exact coordinates of where to appear. But I think point is probably much easier to use, much more common. So let's go with that. And let's use dot center for now. The arrow edge we just discussed is not needed on iOS. And then content, let's click enter and just put our content back in this one. And we will delete the old version here. Cool. And on this button, really quickly, let's just add a little bit of padding and then maybe a background of color dot yellow. Just so that I can see this square, let's make it maybe 20. And again, remember this popover is being drawn on top of the view that it is on. So right now the popover is on what looks like the yellow square on the screen. So if the attachment anchor is the center of that popover, we can see this little arrow appearing right in the center of the view that it is on. If I move this to maybe the top leading, it's going to appear right in the top left corner of the view that it's on. And this is really cool, super customizable. So we can really customize how we want it to appear. I think most of the time we probably want the popover to avoid the button that we are clicking on. So if it's in the center, it kind of covers up the text. Maybe that's what you want. I would probably prefer top to the actual button edge. We could also move it to the bottom and now it's going to basically fully cover the button, which I definitely do not like. One thing I, one thing I will point out here though, is that the popover has this awesome dismissal that if you click anywhere on the screen, it'll dismiss that popover. And I think that's a really great UX that Apple's giving us out of the box, but generally I don't want my popover to cover my button like this. So we can move it back to top. Now, of course, we can customize this attachment anchor, but we can't actually customize where the popover is actually going to appear. So you'll notice right now the anchor is at the top and then the popover is appearing above that anchor. And if I move it to the bottom, the now the anchor is at the bottom, but the popover is still appearing on top of that anchor, right? So we can't actually customize where the popover is going to appear, we can just customize the anchor at this time. And you're probably wondering, well, that's a pretty bad UX. Why would Apple do that? And that's because Apple is including the logic to make sure that the popover appears within the screen itself. So this is actually a benefit for us as developers. So for example, if I put this button in a V stack and then maybe I push the button to the top of the screen, put a spacer in the bottom of the V stack. If we click it now, you'll notice the anchor is at the top, but the actual popover is showing up below the anchor. And that's because if the popover were to appear above the anchor, it would be off screen and users wouldn't be able to actually use it. So Apple's actually customizing the logic to make sure that this popover is appearing on the screen, which is super handy. So generally speaking, if the view that the popover is appearing on is towards the top of the screen like this, my anchor point will probably be on the bottom. But if it is at the bottom of the screen, so if I put the spacer at the top and it's moved to the bottom of the screen, my anchor point is probably going to be closer to the top. All right. And let's wrap this up with just maybe a real world example of when we might want to use some little popover like this. So let's do an at state, at state private var. Let's say feedback options of type, make it an array of string. We'll set it equal to an array here. And let's just say maybe very good with a little emoji because users love emojis. Let's do maybe average with another emoji here, maybe a little less happy, just a little smiley face. And then let's do maybe very bad. And we'll do a little angry user face here. And let's put these feedback options on the screen. In this pop over here, let's change out this text. Let's make it maybe a V stack. Let's make it alignment leading spacing, maybe 12. And we'll do a for each in here for each of the feedback options, which is an array of string and strings are hashable. So the ID that we want to loop on is the hash value of the string itself. So dot self is the hash value of the string. Just a quick reminder. 
click enter here. This will be for each option in the feedback options. And now we're going to put another text on the screen that just has the option. Cool. Let's click it, see where we're at. All right. Let's maybe make each of these a button instead that has the option as the title. And let's add a divider to each of these. So let's click it again. Looking a little better. We don't need the divider down below the bottom one. So let's just say if option is not equal to the feedback options dot last, then we'll put the divider on the screen. And I want to add some padding outside of this entire popover. So let's just add maybe some padding on the V stack. Let's do maybe 20. And this is looking much better. Let's change the click me to maybe provide feedback. And now we have a super simple feedback popover in our app. And if we had a lot of options, we could even go ahead and put this inside like a scroll view. And then we can have this awesome scroll view inside here with a whole bunch of options. So I love this popover modifier just because A, it's very easy to use. It's using basically the same logic that we already know and love in Swift UI, these super simple bindings. All right, so just wrapping up here before we end the video, this popover, the way to use it is basically the same way that we use a sheet or a full screen cover, except we just have to add this new modifier here, presentation compact adaptation. A reminder that we can customize the adaptation for horizontal or vertical if we want. So I'm just going to use popover on both of these just so we have the code here. <clears throat> and that's it for this video. Just a quick one on how to use popover. I think this is super powerful. I'm going to be using this a lot in my apps. I mean, prior to this, if you wanted to show a modal like this, it would require a lot of custom code and it'll probably be not be as smooth and seamless as this native version, right? I can click anywhere on the screen to dismiss the pop-up and that is awesome. And the pop-up's going to appear based, based on where the button is on the screen. So we saw when the button was at the top of the screen, the pop-over appeared below the button. Now it's appearing on top of the button because it's at the bottom of the screen. This is just a really good UX. This is much better than having like segue to a new screen or show this big sheet, right? We can still show sheets if we want to, but this is much more janky than just showing a quick little pop-over. And I would say if you were just showing a little bit of code, maybe a couple buttons, maybe just a small little tip for the user, this is a perfect way to do it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.